Do you worry, Neil, that, that raising rates, and, and whether it's through a series of 50 basis points or maybe 75 does at some point come, come back on the table, if you're trying to increase supply through investment, you're cutting off your nose despite the fit, your face. You, you, wanna, you, know, you want capital deployed to ease all the supply constraints, and it's going to be more expensive to do that every time you raise rates. It's, it's almost a catch-22 and a very difficult and, and blunt tool that the Fed has to, to just try to destroy demand. It's a real problem. I, I don't know. You sure you want to keep doing this? Well, we have our job to do. You know, we have to bring inflation back down, and I'm confident we will do that. But remember, the cost of capital for most in, for most large firms is still very, very low. Right. They can still go fund themselves at a very attractive rate. So I think we're a long way away from the cost of capital being the barrier, for example, to firms investing in the energy sector. I do think it's more lack of confidence on where energy prices are going to be over the medium term to see what kind of return they get on their investment, and also the regulatory environment that you spoke about. Hey, Neil, um, the Fed has a dual mandate, and that's to focus on inflation, but to also flo focus on unemployment, the jobs market. Um, in the past, we've talked about how the Fed probably has even more mandates than that, worrying about a, a series of other things from the economy overall to, to what might happen with the stock market. Is it fair to assume, because at this point you sound like you are pretty laser focused on the inflation piece of it, understandably so, inflation is destroying things right now. Is it fair to assume that you're not paying that much attention as a, as a body to what happens to the stock market at this point? It's, it's going to be focused on inflation and what happens to the market happens? Uh, absolutely. I mean, we've, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I never focus on the stock market as a goal. Uh, we pay attention to asset prices as it comes back around into psychology and spending behavior. But ultimately, it is our dual mandate that drives us. You know, for five years up until the pandemic, I was probably the most dovish member of the Federal Open Market Committee. And I, was, I took that view because we were undershooting on inflation and I still saw there was slack in the labor market. So if you're undershooting on both sides of your mandate, that means the monetary policy is too tight. Now we have a very strong labor market and we want to keep it strong. But inflation is much, much too high, and we have to bring inflation back down. And ideally, if we have monetary policy dialed in right, those two things will be in tension. We'll be at 2 percent inflation, and we'll be at a, a very healthy labor market, and we'll have confidence that we've got it right. But right now, it's just imbalanced, and we need to bring it back into balance. You, you just said you don't focus so much on the stock market unto itself, but you do focus on the psych psychological impact of, of the price of assets, and effectively what I imagine you're saying is the wealth effect or the lack of a wealth effect. Given where well, you've seen assets move over the last month, how do you think that that psychology has changed? Has, do you think that, and also given some of the other numbers you were just talking about in terms of how much household wealth families have, how much more does that have to come down to change the psychology? Well, it's a good question. You know, when I think about this, this um, regime that we might be in a higher pressure equilibrium. The wealth effect is part of that. So stock prices were very high relative to pre-pandemic. Home prices very high relative to pre-pandemic. And then even the lower income households that don't own stocks or don't own a home, many of them have much stronger healthy balance sheets than they had before the pandemic. My theory is that all of that is leading people to feel more confident and to spend more. And maybe that's what's pushing us into this higher consumption, higher spending, higher inflation regime. So, yes, the stock market has come down. Home prices are still very high. The, the latest data is they've still been ro quite robust, even though mortgage rates have climbed quite a bit just over the course of this year. And again, household balance sheets continue to be very strong. And so, you know, we just need to keep paying attention to the data. Some of the, er the most recent inflation data on some measures is a little softer than we had thought might come in. So maybe there's some evidence that things are starting to soften just a hair. But we just need to keep paying attention to the data and seeing where it comes out before we can draw any conclusions.